First of all, we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I start with asking for a volunteer on the board who would like to read the public input statement that I have printed right here. I would do that. Thank you. In regard to public input, the first public input session is a 21 minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. But a second public input station may, session may be held at the end of the meeting, if allowed by the board chair. Each speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents, but the board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions, for example, matters involving personnel cannot be made during public input. We as a community pledge to treat each other as we would wish to be treated ourselves. We pledge to seek understanding when there may be disagreement. Regardless of outcomes or opinions, we pledge to move forward with respect. This is a time for comments or questions for the board, but please be aware that questions may not be able to be answered at this meeting. Thank you. Do we have any people for public input tonight? Okay, moving on. Uh, minutes of February 1st. Some corrections were shown to me by Ms. Lissack and Ms. Traver not taken care of. Where was, which one was that? Just, um, there was a period out of place oh. and there was an unfinished sentence, which I took care of. Oh, okay. Or two. Thank you. Anybody else see? Um, which one are we on? The February 1st. February 1st. Um, I make a motion to approve the February 1st minutes as is. No. I'll second. Three of them down there. Pick one. <laughs> I abstain. It was yeah. not there. I will. All, all those in favor? I abstain as well. I all the six. Hey, do you a yay? I think she can hear, but she can't turn her phone off because okay. of the uh, noise, but that's okay. Okay, so it passed. Are we hitting the Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving on to the minutes of February 18th, uh, February 8th. Sorry. Corrections, omission, punctuation. <laughs> you looked good. I make a motion to accept the minutes from February 8th. I'll second that. <laughs> I think she can hear us now. Yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. I will also abstain. Okay, moving to number four, our discussion and vote of the involving renovation, whatever that stands for. Right. Yeah. Here we go. So these are these copies that are coming around. We just received um, yesterday. They're very similar to what we handed out last meeting from Dr. Mahan. Um, the ones that we handed out the last meeting showed um, the cover sheet for each school, as well as the project. Um, and this is very similar, except the cover, this particular cover page. So on this particular cover page, it does um, at the top, state the four projects again that we are looking at noble high school knowlton school hanson school and north berwick elementary um, and then um, dawn added just a little update that um, the award for the district as well as how much that of the entire fund that was available how much that was so we were the second highest receiver of this grant in the in the state um, and at the bottom of this paper in the blue section you can see that it shows again the high school the award how much the grant will cover and then how much 
for 10 years of financing that would be at 0% for the, through the main bond bank. So we've got Noble High School, Hanson, North Berwick, and Knowlton there. So I'll take, I'll let you take a look at that for a moment. That cover sheet. And again, if well, I can add to that is if we get a 10%, 10-year, 10 0%, we would owe 262, uh, a payment of around 262,000 a year to the, for the payment of that. And the first year that we would have to pay that back would be 25? In the, in the 26 budget. Okay. Yes. All right. Alva and Peg, I'm going to email these documents to you. Um, just so you have them as well. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Unfortunately, I'm driving, so I won't be able to look no. at them. We don't want you to be unsafe, so don't look. But. Gotcha. So, Peg, the packet pretty much just has what we submit, we supplied last week with some highlights um, from Don about the, what exactly is going to be done. So it's nothing that's new from what he presented to us a couple weeks ago and that we received last week. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. So I, I have just one question. Um, how, what's the process like, who, who do we decide like who does the work and, and who has who in the field of it? Like I'm not an HVAC expert at, at all. I, mean, I have no idea how much it actually costs to do this. Like, so like, do we have people in our community who look at this and say, this is a fair price for this? I, I don't know that process. Could you explain a little bit about that? I think Don puts that out to bid. Mm -hmm. So he is, this is what he and his company do. They do these kinds of projects. They analyze them. They um, Steve, who was an engineer, came in that night they presented. So they work with outside people in addition to their people in their company. And they do this all the time and they go out to bid for things. So they have uh, a pretty good sense of that. Um, so, they, so they go out to public, the right. public bid. So is Don, what's Don's role? Is he like general manager of the project? Is that how that works? I don't know what his title would be, but he oversees, like he is our contact mm -hmm. and then he con he is the one that deals with the contractors. But he is definitely um, so kind of like the so general contractor. The general, right. You know. right. And so when we hired Don to be the the gentleman who actually, or the company that oversaw this, that went out to bid. They came in, presented all there. Several people, several companies came in, presented to us, and we went with this company because they were the best bang for your buck. Basically, is what we did. So then they're now doing the same work in terms of putting things out to bid, making sure that the money is exact. You know, getting the best dollar and product for the dollar. Yeah. Right, and so. Um, just a, how so how is don paid is don paid by as a percentage of what the project costs or does he have a certain flat fee that that's what it is for the project i mean i i see the, the numbers in there I just, I just don't know how that compensation works and i'm getting questions about that stuff so how that works okay i would have to take a deeper dive into this um yeah well i don't want to say say something that's not accurate but i mean it's basically a, a general contractor who gets you know i would say probably a percentage of the of the of the uh, project you know, goes to them, right? Yeah, just um, there are rules from the state, right? Because right? this is yeah. state money, right. so that you know, when you're advertising for contractors, you have to advertise um, up in Portland. You have to what is the Kennebec Journal, mm -hmm. Portland, and maybe another local place. Yeah, two or three places mm -hmm. you have to add. They're mandated. They, they have to. Right. So there are very yeah. strict rules okay. um, that people have to follow that fall in line with what the state requires, um, and he. We are looking, it's all put kind of put out to bid. Mm -hmm. And then the state also, I think, takes a yeah. look and says, it's, we've had to submit the, our proposals. So they've mm -hmm. had to already kind of analyze things mm -hmm. um, and determine whether they would support the cost of whatever that project is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Those are the questions I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the second, so just I want to um, 
draw your attention to Knowlton School. So Knowlton School's award was $2 million um, from the state. However, the estimate for the project at Knowlton is 300,000 over that. So in order to do that, we would need to do, we could do one of two things. We could either finance a, that portion through the main bond bank as well, uh, which would not come in at 0%. That, that interest rate would be different than that or we could just put it to local funds and bring it up, bring it in as part of our budget. And again, that would not be due until the project was done and complete. So it would not impact this upcoming fiscal 25 budget. And does that part of this need to be answered tonight also? Okay. Yes. Well, not necessarily because we could approve as this is yeah and then we can work through the Knowlton piece really yes. okay that overage right. okay. okay but that overage isn't included in in any of the numbers that we have right now right what was the number I can't remember the three hundred forty nine thousand dollars extra I believe it was in the original document mm -hmm. that you got last year yeah. yeah I have that here three hundred fifty yeah, yeah, yeah just so that people can go back and look mm -hmm. yeah. Would it be a consideration for us to use um, like designated reserve funds for something like that? Is that, is that an appropriate use? So we have um, fund balance, which is undesignated mm -hmm. balances. We have no designated fund okay. balances. So um, it definitely could be something we applied that money to. Um, it could um, be, again, part of our budget where it's a, basically like a base project that we have in like our CIP listing. Mm -hmm. um, or you could choose to finance it again with interest over, I think he said up to 15 years, um, yeah. but the rest of the project would be over 10. At zero percent. Okay. Um, so that we do have options. I think within the next, within 30 days of the notice, which was January 20th. January uh, 31st. 31st. Yes, 21. 20, 24, yep. Our requirement is we need to reach out to the main bond bank with our intention. There's nothing we have to sign. And once we indicate our intention, then she helps me go out there. We fill out, have to fill out an application which requires not only financial information, financial information from the three towns. Um, and they said they've, I haven't seen the new application. They said it has been simplified since the last time we did an SRRF project. Um, and it's not quite as burdensome on the towns. Um, they ask for things like your your 10 biggest taxpayers and things like that. So, um, they said they've simplified it a little bit. So, but I, I think that what we're looking for tonight is our attention. That's mm -hmm. what we're talking about. Okay. And the second and third page just lay out the process that the district would. Yeah. And then the following pages from that are the schools and the highlights of the projects. Again, so we have to vote on this tonight because to make the yes, we would mark or to make the March whatever is yes, March date. I'll make, I'll make the motion that we um, we approve the proposed work um, and uh, submit our um, intent to go through the bond process for this. I second that. Okay, any other questions or discussion before? Oh. Okay, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. Excellent. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. I think, yeah, I think it's um, a really great thing because yeah. uh, there are projects that will need to be done at some point and why not take advantage of free money and zero income. No, it's not free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you look at this the amount, we yeah, the amount that we're zero percent yeah. financing. Yeah, it's kind of uh, it's okay. good with zero percent financing. Also, the fact that this project, these projects, finished second out of a hundred and nine projects submitted. Yeah, I mean, wow. it's a lot. The summary is that there's a clear need. I mean, yeah. things are like twenty years past their life. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's it also an issue. honestly speaks well of Don's. Team yes. together, hundred yeah. percent. They were able to present it in a really clear, yep. clear way. So we appreciate that. All right. Thank you.
we will go to our financial summary. That goes this way. This goes this way. Thank you. Okay, yeah, he can stand. Mm -hmm. I believe we have 42% remaining of the school year. Revenue is coming in again when it's the towns and the state with our majority of revenue. That's pretty, pretty, you can count on those on those receipts. Mm -hmm. um, expenses are looking good. I would say the one uh, nugget that I would offer today, you know, we've been talking a lot about electricity and Sue and I were able, Sue, Audra and I were able to have a conference call yesterday with a local uh, firm that is going to try to save us some money on electricity. Mm -hmm. um, prices have really gone down since we last locked in um, a contract two years ago. And uh, we're looking to fully take that on and hopefully lock in for fiscal 25. Mm -hmm. So we're working on that. Kind of savings do you anticipate or you no idea? Well, I think our contract is again not exactly in front of me, 16 or 17 cents, and that's for the supply. Um, and they are looking at somewhere right now that rates are around 10 cents. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So we're, you know, again, we're we're taking a look at what our best bet forward is. Yep. But does that proposal include any um alternate energy sources like solar? Um, we haven't gotten that far, to be honest, in the conversation. Okay. Um, what we basically did is he outlined why he thought they would be able to save us some money. They forwarded us some uh, references for other public school districts that are using them. Westbrook and Jennifer, uh, there's, there's a few. There, Jennifer, there are a few um, larger school districts, too. Um, so we that would be something we could ask yes. uh, to go forward. Did Peg have a question to start? Nope. nope. Denise, in the revenue section under other, yes. we have, it says a negative, but it looks like to me it's a positive. What is that from? So um, that is an efficiency main check that we received early for the project, our HVAC bond that we're currently, they're currently still working on, 379,000. Um, it was, in my ideal world, it would have come in July 1st so that it kind of matched up with our uh, repayment, um, but it came in early, um, but 379 from Efficiency Maine. That was unbudgeted. I had a question on the career and technical education, mm -hmm. and um, it's a negative. Yeah, so when we budgeted last year, we budgeted with the information we had, and I think there was a slight change between when when I got the information and when we finalized. Okay. Um, so it, that is still that same payment to Sanford Regional Technical Center for it is. Okay. students. Okay. Okay. Are you worried about transportation? I'm worried about lots of things. Yeah, I saw that. They're like, oh, so. yeah. yeah, well, and, you know, at this point in the year, most things have been purchased. Like, the most things you need for the school year are purchased in the summer, generally, and into the fall. Um, you have another round that kind of comes around the corner in the new year, but um, most of what's left is our salaries and benefits, which are encumbered. So they're in that column. So these are things that are still out there. Like um, we're going to look great on the snow, not the snow plowing, but the snow removal amount of our budget, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. obviously. That's so mm. that. um, but um, yeah, every every everything has its own little quirks. It does. And we thank you for taking care of all yes. those little work. And all those sleepless nights. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next. SRO can the discussion. We put this back on the agenda just so we can keep having a discussion or see if there are any additional questions that we have. We do have um, 
a vote that should be coming up over the next month. I believe he um, by the end of March is when, and I know that in our last discussion of the SRO, some of that discussion occurred around what does the budget look like? It's hard to really make that decision until we see the impact to the budget. But we did add it to the agenda just in case there are other questions that have come up that we would give, this would allow us time to get information, additional information if anybody needs anything other than the budget information. That's coming. coming but yeah. So, so where are we kind of in terms of, and are we, are we still collecting information? Are we looking for public input? Are we regarding the SRO itself? Yeah. Uh, honestly, it's, it's really up to the board in terms of, I know that finances is one thing, but as what else is out there that's really holding either forward against for you guys, what do you, mm -hmm. what information do you need? beyond the bottom line cost. And it will, I'll be clear with you all, we're gonna be providing you with your board budget books. Um, and we've got, we're gonna, I'm just gonna talk about like a, a, the next timeline. Um, it's gonna be a tough budget. So regardless, we're, all of these things that we're gonna be looking at are going to be co concerning in terms of what are, we, what, what are we looking for? What are we thinking we need to um, reduce? That kind of thing. So philosophically, I think there is a big piece here that you need to talk about this the safety issue and whether or not you want to pursue it. Um, oh, I would like to just ask a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. um, what would an SRO's day look like where he's just going to be in Lebanon? What would his day kind of look like? Not, not like schedule, but what would be some of the things that he would be doing? So typically, and what? so I'll use Milton as an example because he's our, our um, middle school um, person. He's out there in front of the school every day, meeting meeting parents, meeting kids, walking in, being part of the administrative team, basically coming through the doors. And then as the day progresses, um, it, the initial thing is really about community policing, getting to know students, getting to know families, doing that kind of work. But then there's the piece of um, if things are coming up. Um, I would say probably conversations around bullying would happen. I think conversations about like just individual connections with students, connections, if we're having disciplinary issues, Milton or Milt takes part in some of those things. So kind of like a big, an additional piece of the staff. So when you talk about discipline, that was another question. How would it be used in a disciplinary um, capacity? I mean, so typically what, um, what happens really is, is just that next level of, uh, I guess I will call it an outside influence, right? You have somebody coming in that's actually has a very strong uh, understanding of law enforcement and what, what, where is this taking you, young man, young, young lady, you know, in terms of it's, it's really about those, those relationships. Okay, so it, he wouldn't necessarily be like, you know, doling out punishment, right? He'd be having conversations with the administrative group and saying, hey, how are we going to handle this situation? Part of my concern is um, there was a disciplinary um, problem. I called it, to, uh, someone was giving a disciplinary problem. When um, the sheriffs were actually at the polling booth in Lebanon. Okay. And one of the sheriffs was pulled out from what he was do, supposed mm -hmm. to be doing mm -hmm. into the school to handle that. Okay. I'm just wondering, what what would lead to something like that? I mean, and what exactly would they be doing? I mean, is there a chance that the child could get hurt? I and what would be so I'm not, our liability to that? That's why I'm saying. I mean, he's working for the schools, mm -hmm. so that would be a liability on us because um, I understand some children can get physical, and I know these are little kids, but still, yeah. it can happen, mm -hmm. and. Um, my concern is that they would rely on him more than um, really would be necessary because, again, the teachers know the specific things about mm -hmm. who, the children. They know them best, and he would have relationships with them. But um, there are certain circumstances where I would really say he shouldn't be called in for the disciplinary issues. I think you're accurate. I don't think that that's something that people would use lightly. Um, I don't, so I, 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 I'm not sure of that specific incident that you're talking about. So I don't really know. I don't know how to I, I don't know that. what it was. I was just told by a community member that the sheriff 
was pulled out of working for the town. So to that's something we can follow school. up. I can, you know, we can talk to to Ms. McLeans and find out what actually happened so that we have a little better of a handle on that. But I would say that's very atypical, right? Yes. Not something that typically happens. Um, and I think the other piece of this, in terms of the the particular desire to have an SRO in Lebanon, is really also about the safety in general and safety concerns and close proximity for the school and that kind of thing. I think that's really where um, a lot of this impetus is. Right, because there's a lot of concern around um, the disciplinary issue where that happened to happen. So I'd love to hear more about that. So okay. when you, if, if you have um, people that are concerned about it, I'd love to hear about it because I, that's, it's not something we've ever had any concerns from or spoken to us about. So I'll talk to Mrs. LaFrance and see what she's heard. Okay. Um, and I feel like, and there was a lot of information shared that night, so I could be completely wrong. I feel like when they did the initial presentation, they alluded to SROs having different training, like more training, yes. not just a police officer off the street coming into the school. And now that's their, like their job has switched to that. There's like, but there's other Hold levels of that in the school. We have children with special yes. needs. We have children yes. with special yep. things. But as far as like, it can be attributed to what yes. their special need may be, or a child who's just yes. Have but someone coming from right. like the polls to going right. into handle is gonna is not right. going to have that same level of training for the school background. I think from what I understood, and again, it's a lot of information that night. Well, if they've had behavioral, they would be able to do that. That would be what they're trying to do. Right. So even but, in the school setting, right, he may not have that particular understanding of what the. I mean, the child could be doing something in the hallway, and he may not have that. That foresight if he's like monitoring the hallway. So I, yeah, those I, those concerns. Oh, sorry, got. I I think they are, they do have that some certain level of training, but I also think if they are if a teacher is calling in an officer or a sheriff to help. Uh, that, that was, I'd say that was fortunate they were there, and that's a, another reason why this is a beneficial thing to have. I, I have never heard of a police officer injuring a child as a result of an SRO role. Never. I mean, I've seen, I've seen them uh, in uh, other districts, SROs, how they work, and um, they are just everywhere in the building they know the students that that need they get to know the students very well certain ones and ones that need guidance and you know and you know how you doing today you know stuff like that but they're also there when a student kind of loses it yep and has to be restrained or whatever because they're trained in restraint right and um i, I see it as a very positive thing um, for the kids, the community, um, it's just, it's another person there that's there to listen to the kids and get to know them so that he knows the family, all that stuff. And, you know, the kid, the kid, the kids, once they form that bond, you know, they really look up to them and, and will tell them some stuff sometimes that they won't tell other people. So, you know, it's kind of like almost... A little bit of a counselor, but you know. I, so I agree. And, it, and the bullying part at that age, if we can get ahead of it there, it can be such a great preventative tool for issues that will occur later on if that goes unaddressed. But I still think that the administration doesn't need to rely on an SRO officer to do the majority of that. No, absolutely. Oh, no, no, no. And no, I don't think no. anybody's. No. I, no. Oh, I truly, think I don't think that's. That's not what an SRO officer no. is for. Nope. No. no. Definitely not. Part of the team, though. Right. Yeah. Part of the team. But. So I have three questions, too. The first one is what I know the DARE program is, is mm -hmm. typically delivered by one of these mm -hmm. SRO officers. Uh, officers so that seems to be a very good what yes use yeah. of their time what about what percentage of their time is is uh dedicated to doing that you typically in the spring okay and it typically runs multiple months mm -hmm. so it's weekly lessons okay students then need to do some reflection mm -hmm. and writing and um 
and then there's like a, a family event that occurs after they've gone through the program. So there's all those pieces as well. I think it's like a eight week program. Yes. Is that what it is? Yeah. It's back you in that yeah. fifth grade world that you used to live in. Yeah. Oh, it's long. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think the other the other piece that we've utilized our resource officers for in in both at the high school and at the middle school, and Officer Fogg has helped us at the Berwick Elementary schools as well. You know, Huzzy and Knowlton is, you know, there are very specific custody paperwork that we get. We have a lot of students that move in or move out and all those um, pieces that you can certainly talk to a lawyer, but the interpretation from law enforcement is certainly helpful in the school setting. And what does that mean and how does it look? Um, so that's also a piece. And, and, you know, there have been times in Lebanon in the past that, um, and I'm not singling out Lebanon except because this is where we're talking, um, that when parent, you know, pickup has been hard. Mm -hmm. There's been some um, conflict at pickup mm -hmm. and that becomes a very um, vulnerable time if it takes a long time for somebody to get there, so. So the other question is, um, Victoria uh, alluded to the fact that this SRO works for us. And is, is that true or does the, the SRO uh, contemplating bringing in, do they work for the York so Sheriff's would Department be, or for us? Right. It's right. the Sheriff's Department. And so for like Berwick, uh, Melt works for the Berwick Police Department, but he is housed at yeah. Noble Middle School. And then um, Johnny works for the North Berwick Police Department. Um, they have to follow all of the, you know, all the laws and, and all that piece, but we do provide payment <laughs> for, for them to be housed in our buildings. And then I guess the, the elephant in the room from my perspective is what does the Lebanon community think of this and are they going to block it paying for the percentage that has to be funded by the town? I don't know. I have some, uh, me. There are some questions and, and some comments as I've uh, thought about this. Um, some of the things that have been brought up just now, um, I was curious how, how many discipline issues have we had in the last, say, two or three years where we've needed to call the sheriff department um, for intervention? Uh, um, in Lebanon, you're talking about? Yes, ma'am. I will find out, but I don't think that many. We don't typically call the sheriff's kids. department for kids. We, we don't. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, that Hopefully you're calling the parents. Right. Well, yes. Right. So, you know, I think that that kind of speaks to, I mean, I'll first off say, I mean, gosh, would I love to have an SRO officer in every building? Sure. I'd love to have one at every single summer camp too. And I'd love to have one at every single day daycare and preschool where our loved ones are as well. Um, where's, I mean, the slippery slope, where does it go? Um, and I think that that's a valid question for a school board to be asking, regardless of whether we we want to element, you know, in our own elementary school. I mean, the answer is of course, right? Um, but then, then what? And then where? And and so, at some point, you kind of have to, you got to figure out where that line is. Um, regardless, I mean, it's 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 a difficult decision to make. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't know if we've had any conversation with the sheriff department of. Uh, I, I do know in, in North Berwick and Berwick, um, the local police departments are, they're very present from what I hear. They're very present at our elementary schools. Um, I, I don't know if the Sheriff's Department is willing to increase their presence at Hanson, at Lebanon Elementary Schools, especially during maybe pickup, if that's an area where there's been some conflict or drop off where there's been some conflict. I think that that could be a conversation um, in whether our school district would, I, I don't know how that would work if that's even a possibility of saying, hey, we're not willing to pay for nine months of an officer, but maybe we're willing to pay for one month of an officer if we can get increased presence at the school. Um, I, I know that's not part of this that. vote. I, I think he spoke to that, Josh, when he was there. I, if they don't have an officer dedicated, they can never guarantee you that they're gonna be anywhere because they, they mm -hmm. cover so many towns. Mm -hmm. yeah. so they who does the DARE Elementary now, DARE, Dare in Lebanon now? So Milton would go out if he could. He doesn't always. So it depends on the year and how busy he is. So he's he is covered from Berwick. He's been allowed to go up and done Lebanon in the past. I'm not really sure actually how frequently it's done right now. I, I have Heather on, so I'll find out. Okay. Um, 
but she, he has definitely been able to take some time in the past. Um, and uh, the the other thing that uh, just I guess to, to, that I'm putting through my mind is that we've heard the uh, SRO officers um, from middle school and high school um, have been have been at times gone down to Berwick Elementary and North Berwick Elementary, and I think that's a it's an interesting conversation when you when you think about um, that the, the district is paying for it to be at the middle school where Berwick, Lebanon, and North Berwick students benefit from that presence and pay for that presence, right, tax-wise, pay for that presence. But then we're using them to just solely benefit Berwick students and solely benefit North Berwick students. And I think that that's, a, that's probably a conversation that, that we should talk about and wondering what our comfort level is that just in and being fairness to to all three towns and contributions and how that's benefiting students or not benefiting students. So, I mean, I, I do have a lot of questions. Um, you know, ultimately, yeah, I would love to see an SRO in every, like I said, in every single situation. I just honestly don't think it's feasible. So my my opinion right now is because I don't truly believe it's feasible in all situations. I would draw the line and saying middle school and high school is where we're at right now. Anybody else have any questions, comments? Do we need to, is, is there at some point, do we need to go to the select board in Lebanon and have a discussion with them about funding if we decided to go forward with an SRO for Lebanon? Um, so at some point, I think that would be appropriate. I think the, the way that the grant is written, it is not with the town of Lebanon. Right. It is with the school system. Okay. Yeah. So, but then when you move past that, once you get past the three years of the grant, that's when, and it's exactly what happened, honestly, with our North Berwick and our Berwick crew, that they, we had we started our SROs through the COPS grants and then moved them back into their, into the towns. So similar kind of conversation. Yeah. Okay. Well, the timing would be um, after the grant, when the grant is um, like, Almost we over. Approve, we have to approve. That's it. That's when you would go to the selectmen, or I would say you go to the selectmen before. You know, you have would, conversations prior right, to that. But I think the react happens. like, but that's not the stopping point for this, for this cops grant. We we have to give a response right. regardless of. Yeah, at some point, we have to give a response. That's so. It it really is. I will say I am dating myself. I'm old because um, Heather said that they have not had dare in Lebanon for at least five years. I was going to say, so I that means that our kids, that those that. kiddos aren't getting that service, which is, but primarily because of the, uh, you know, Milt just can't get there. So, yeah, and then I can just respond to the, con the I think the yeah. issue is time of response. So, yeah, Berwick, we, I don't know that we're talking about putting a, an SRO in every elementary school. The issue is we have elementary school in Lebanon that has no guarantee of response, uh, not to mention missing these other benefits of having the SRO. So I, I think the conversation with Lebanon is you need to do something about that. The school should really be responsible for that. But unfortunately, if we want to protect those children, at least to some extent, I, I think we need to do that. Well, what were the survey results of the Lebanon parents? No. It was pretty overwhelming. In right. Terms of them. I mean, there's definitely a feel of need from the parents of kids in that school. But if we ask Berwick and North Berwick Primary, they would respond similarly. I'd be surprised if the survey results would be any different for any one of our elementary schools. But at least, like, I often see a police officer drop off at our school, like at North Berwick Elementary. Like, they, there, it, there is presence, yeah. at least, and it's much but if closer we ask, presence. if we ask the yeah. same question, as a North Berwick Elementary parent, I see more of a need in Lebanon than I see at North Berwick Elementary. God forbid anything. I would, say, I would say the same thing as a Berwick parent. It's different. It's very different. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the re re response time, I, I, again, I'm not not trying to be argumentative, but response time, most, if, if, you, if we're talking about safety and we're talking about an assault on the school, right, most of them um, are done within 99 seconds. So that's a, that's a minute and a half. So, you know, yes, maybe a North Berwick police officer happens to be there or a Berwick police officer happens to be there, but if they're not on campus, the devastation's already done. That's the scary part. 
and even I at the high school, if they're at the wrong, if they're at the wrong end of the high school, the damage has already been done, right? I mean, they, I, I hate talking about this stuff, but it makes me so angry and so sad. Those aren't the only issues, though. I think that the issue of a parent to pick up a non-custodial parent, that's happened, and I remember it, with mm -hmm. the school in lockdown mm -hmm. because you have a non-custodial parent there mm -hmm. trying to get a child. At the, that's not the same thing as a shooting. Mm -hmm. And there, so there are issues where it, it would be a real support. I feel bad for those teachers and the principal who know they have no one right now. They really have no support. We do have protocols for that, though, right? I mean, of course, yeah, but yeah, like, protocols, but yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, Lebanon is way far away mm -hmm. than the other two towns are, mm -hmm. and that's that's the reality why we don't have dare and other things <laughs> in the school we don't have that others do. Um, and I think we need this. I so, is is dare currently being done by Northbrook PD and Berwick PD, or is it done by our SRO officers? It's done by um, our SRO officer in Berwick, but in, um, well, actually, yes. yeah, right. that because it's North Berwick, Berwick, that, yep. Both our fifth grades for North Berwick and Berwick are in the Berwick schools. It used to be that Chief Peasley actually did dare for the North Berwick kiddos. Oh, okay. But because the fifth grade moved over, they're just, it's a one. And Lebanon fifth grade is? Lebanon fifth grade is in Lebanon. <laughs> so see what I'm saying? Because Milton School houses both the fifth grade for Berwick and the fifth grade for North Berwick. Yeah. That happened a few, three years ago, two years ago? And some of the fourth three grade. Three years ago. Two years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So yeah, every time things change, that like, you know, and we need the resources to, change. We need to make a decision by the end of what you say, March? March. Yes. End of March. Yep. And we've got budget. Right. That's yeah. coming down a parallel path. Right. Yes. Yes. We've got the budget stuff at the right. beginning of March. Right. Yeah. So, right. so it's all real. I think that this actually is helpful to have the conversation and we can talk with, um, we can get some more information um, and maybe talk to Lebanon in terms of the select folk and uh, just people in general and get some more feedback for you guys. Um, ultimately, I think it's just going to be one of those hard decisions. If we're, if we're, we're going to survey Lebanon community again, I, I strongly recommend we survey the community of Lebanon, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. the school community. That's that's. I mean, the community is going to end up paying for it, right, through through school taxation. So I think it's important to make sure that we are asking the entire community of Lebanon. And, and I know that's hard to do, yep. but I, otherwise it's it's extremely. Are you going to do that, Bob? Well, I'm, I mean, you know, we can. Simple bias, right? I mean. We could. <laughs> I think it will be difficult to be able to get a survey out. I agree. I, theoretically, I, but we could do an open evening in Lebanon and talk about this and then have the community present. That's, that's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. So we can talk about that and try to get something going. Right, because that way, instead of a survey where the question has to be very detailed, this way there'd be more of a discussion. I think that's a good idea. And we can do an exit ticket from that so that people can say yay, nay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, let me look at the timing on that. Okay, we all set? That's our roll. Okay. Next is employment. Okay, we have a leave of absence request from Desiree Labby, who is currently a first grade teacher at Hanson School. She's looking for the leave of absence for the 24-25 school year, so we do need a motion to that. It'd be for the whole year, you're saying? It is the whole year, yes. Is it a sabbatical? No, nope, it's, it's, a, it's a family. Family medical. Yeah. Yes. Starting. Next year. Yeah. So she'll oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. She'll be finishing. So it'd be 24, 25. 24, 25 school year. Yep. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Employment. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Oh, okay. Right. okay. Superintendent update. Okay, a few updates. The first is that um, Amanda McIntyre, who is on our elementary literacy uh, math coach, uh, created a podcast, and that's on our district website, but it's also going to be added into the, the newsletters. 
Um, so it's called Monthly Math Minute, which was a little longer than a minute, but um, mm -hmm. did a fabulous job with that. So I'm just calling attention to it. It's really well done. Uh, the other thing is, is that it is Love the Bus Month. So Berwick Community Media uh, highlighted two of our drivers, but Janet and Joelle. And it's so well done. And again, it's on our district webpage as well. So if you get a chance to look at both of those, um, like I said, love the bus month. It's love the bus month. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah, awesome. yeah. that's great. Um, kindergarten registration is coming up late April and May. I know, Estacio, you've been working with the building based secretaries on that piece. It's always a busy time, you know, and always a fun time because you're looking ahead to the following year, but you still have your your year ahead, you know, coming to a close. So it's always an exciting period of time. Let's see what else. Um, there was a question from a board member about um, the the vaping, the prevalence of vaping at the middle school. So just a couple of things we've spoken with Mike, um, the principal, a few times about this, and um, there are so it's similar to what everybody is seeing around us there has been increases at the high school at the middle school with vaping um so we are not immune to that in this in our area uh, we have a couple things that have been going on for that so when students at the middle school have um it been investigated for vaping and it has been confirmed that they are vaping there um has been consequences such as suspension and as well as that, they also um, have a course that they are taking with the um, the health coordinator, Kella Sillis. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a four part series that they go through with her. Um, so it's on facts, dependency, healthy alternatives and next steps to um, avoid, you know, to avoid that piece. Um, principal, the, you know, Mike said that um, that course is pretty well received not all students embrace it but that it is well received and um, has opened a lot of eyes so there are some there's two levels that are happening at the middle school the first is that there are some students that are very dependent on nicotine so those students have more um, of a chronic kind of piece to that and that's really where we're trying to focus um, the health coordinator on and then there are students that you know see it want to try it get caught and then that's it so it's a, like a one-off so those that's what's happening um, at the middle school I will say at the high school we are piloting a vape detector and we have had quite a bit of success with that so we are looking to expand that um, as soon as we get further information from the high school on that piece so does the yeah. program they have any kind of a, a section on vaping or we definitely have a, a piece on resistance okay and some role playing or some kind of going through modules on you know how to say no mm -hmm. to to multiple things okay how to be safe how to make good decisions mm -hmm. yeah Okay. I think that one of the problems with the, well, kids just are not that afraid of it. Mm -hmm. So they just do it because it tastes like bubble gum or it tastes like it's not, it's not like the old days when you picked up a cigarette and you hacked with, you took a swig off of it. These things taste good to kids. And so they don't recognize that there's a real danger with them. So that's the work that the health teacher is doing is trying to help them understand what this is doing to their bodies when they do this and the incredible addiction that happens very quickly for these guys and they, and all of the really uh, the commercials that they're sending out these days are really good about what these kids are f facing and and the addiction is strong so we done that do you have any information about uh, how middle school students are procuring vaping supplies is that getting to the root cause of what no i don't think it's hard i think that you can get vapes in the mail via online i think there's a lot is that what they're doing yeah you know? they're doing all kinds of different things and someone's getting it from their big brothers or so you know it's similar to the old I, I, where there's a will there's a way kind of thing i think that's what's happening um and it is much easier to do the online you know ordering have we um have we thought about or have we 
uh, communicated with our middle school parents in a very like full school all way. Say we're seeing an increase. This is an issue. If you're getting packages that you wouldn't expect, like like to, like me, it's to all of that. I shared that information. And just say, look, this is a this is a big issue. If you think your child isn't, they might be. Yeah. Kind of thing. So it's next on the list, but it's similar to we've got a community awareness group going, and Lauren can help me talk about it. But it is that piece about it's. We've been, we're talking about digital safety right now, but vaping and all that other piece of it is part of these same kind of conversations about trying to help parents understand um, how their kids are circumventing uh, them. Yeah, <laughs> how their kids are circumventing them and, and what the impact is um, and just opening up eyes, really. So we'll talk about that in a second, but sure. yes, yes. Good. What does the vaping detector look like? <laughs> I don't know if say too much about yeah. it. <laughs> Good answer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this next document that's coming is the updated uh, timeline for the budget. And so I just want to go through some of those things. Uh, as of right now, it says there's budget binders to the board. Uh, that will likely be tomorrow. Um, <laughs> we're going to do some home yeah, deliveries. Yes. Seriously. We will. just want to make sure that everything's right. We just want to make uh, so what we bumped up on for Thursday, February 29th. So that's not next week. It's the week after. And that will be the first draft of the budget um, with a question and answer to the central office. Then Saturday, the state has been with us for a while. This has not changed. So this is the budget workshop from eight to two. And that's when all the cost centers are coming in to present their budget. Six hours, um, really? Yes. So lunch. We'll, we'll, we'll feed you stretch breaks. Yeah, <laughs> some stretch breaks. Um, we add, added uh, earlier, and we kept this in March fourteenth uh, as a tentative date for um, a discussion. As Sue mentioned, the budget it's going to be a hard cycle, so we will likely need that meeting uh, to go through things, and um, and the rest of it has remained the same. That timeline is the same. When you receive your budget books, um, there's no formal presentation that goes with this portion because we historically, a long tradition in the district has been that uh, the budget binders go out a couple weeks before we, we tackle it because some um, board members like to look at it ahead. Some like to look at it on the day when we go through as the first, you know, glance at it. Uh, so really, it's up to you however you want to handle it. But we, we will have them available. And like like Sue mentioned, we will get them to you tomorrow. Um, I'm handing out one other document, possibly. Yes. This is a sample of what you're going to see in the binders. And for those of you who is this is not your first go round with the budget. It will look very familiar. This is the library. And this, um, all the cost centers have a document that will be similar. So uh, like the high, Noble High School will have Noble High School. Noble Middle School will have Noble Middle School. But we do have some like facilities that are district wide, system administration, system wide. So there are system wide sections as well as school based sections and on this but so on this paper they all will be formatted similarly so you will see the budget from fiscal year 24 which was what we're working it with right now and then you will see the estimate for 25. so this one has just a front and back for you and when our cost centers come in to present Typically what has happened, and we'll have more discussion about this on the 29th, but typically what happens is they talk about, um, you know, where some increases are and why. So they give you the rationale about why. Is it postage? Is it that textbooks went up a lot of money? You know, those types of things. Or are they finding that they're not using that part of the curriculum purpose? So they'll go through all of that with, with us when we meet with them. Um, Again, it feels kind of funny to hand off the books before we go through a presentation, but I do want to respect the fact that, you know, so you may want to look at it ahead. Um, it may not fully make all that, you know, all sense to you. So I just want you to know that. And I also want you to know, this is your warning, that when it comes out, it is high. 
like it will be a high percentage that we are looking at. That is not our by any means our final. This is what we have collected and from our cost centers. This is what um, we feel they feel um, to support their programs at this point in time, knowing full well that when we go through Saturday and when we go through all the next workshop days, that's that's the that's the job of that's this is the hard work like this is the hard work so when you see that don't think oh my gosh i mean you're gonna think oh my gosh but um don't panic we'll don't figure panic. it out we'll figure it out yeah. thank you yeah yeah so like i said this is just a Part sampling of, of how it's going to look Being on the 29th that's yes. something we need to be at what time is it sure so because it's an, we hadn't scheduled it as something. I was going to propose six fifteen to seven fifteen for a quick overview, and then um, the two seventy nine, which is the document that Denise went through last last year with us. That was very very helpful. Um, that is the formula that goes through how they calculate the cost for education in the state of Maine. Yeah. And uh, we have our own, it, it's going to be in the budget binder. Um, when you get it, it, it's already in there. So we will go through that in detail. But I think that's a lot of information. And we'll go through the revenue page at that point in time, because that that page was also, we had a lot of questions about that page last year when Denise went through that with us. So the ED279, the revenue sheet, and then I will just do a very, you know, an overview on, you know, the challenges and, and where we are and where we need to go. Six o'clock, six fifteen. Six fifteen to seven fifteen if that works. That's twenty ninth, right? Yes. Peg, would that work for you? Yeah, I think so. And I hate to ask this, Sue, but can you either send me a text or an email just so I remember to put on my calendar yeah. when I get home? Thanks. Can we move it a little bit? 615 is really going to be hard for me. Well, that's here. Sure. Yes, that's sir. why I just threw that out as a time. Mm -hmm. Is 630 better or would you closer to 7? 30 is better. Okay. All right. So 630 to 730? Okay. Okay. Elva, does that work for you? Yes, should. Okay. Thank you. Where will we be meeting? Um, Probably in here. Yeah. Okay, it's fine. Where are you? Everybody giving me 15 minutes. Thank sure, you. Sure. <laughs> we're in the we're in the um, lecture hall, Peg. Uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> Where are you? Good question. <laughs> it's a workshop. It's a workshop. So it's yes. Is that it? Okay, that's it for me. Sue, did you want to? Yeah. Um, have celebrations. We have celebrations. Oh, what are we doing? Well, I'm going to pass around. So out of the meetings that we had, um, gosh, when was that? December? December? -ish? Yeah. We had a group of people, a large group of folks coming together to talk about some of the struggles that we have in our community. Um, and out of that group, there were three smaller groups that broke off. One is um, focusing on mentoring. That group is actually um, has really connected with the Berwick mentoring group which has been great and they and also aj is in charge of the mentoring group right now poor guy um so we have a group of middle school and high school students working together so um that's happening in two weeks started the middle school and high school students started officer fog came over my day and tuesday of the oh okay you got them all hooked up okay right right so it just the just trying to to just develop some good relationships for some of our middle school school and our high school students. The Berwick um, Rec Department is actually expanding their mentoring program as well with us. And so we have outside folks who are interested in working with students here in the district as well. So that's been great. Um, and then the community forum piece, are we've been trying to raise just awareness about specifically about the digital um struggles that we have lauren do you want to talk about any bit about that because yeah. we we've got a lot going on yeah um 
it's kind of we went the community awareness and like right now the focus is digital safety, but we tried to pick something so we could keep moving it forward as different topics change. Um, and really just trying to get education out about like, I mean, I'm on the committee and I've already learned so much that is out there that I do not know about and resources for parents and just um, things to look out for. Um, so Bridget Dumont, um, our uh, technology director, head of technology director. Um, like she blew me away. I mean, I can't make a pamphlet like this to save my life, but like overnight, she's like, here you go. And I was like, how did you pull all this together and put this? Like, I'm so blown away by what she did. Um, and so the focus is going to be, we'll have these pamphlets. She was also working on some um, like grade specific things. So like if you're an elementary school parent, like grab this one. If you're a middle school parent, grab this one. If you're a high school parent, grab this. Um, and our goal right now is to be at one um, community event a month. So tomorrow night here, Berwick PTO has a medium. Um, so Saki and I are going to be manning the table um, tomorrow and just kind of being there for conversations and to bring awareness and try to get out the community. And then like tomorrow will be our first one. So really just get the feedback of like, did our table even attract you? Like, did you learn anything from this kind of, you know, like this is a brand new like pilot thing. So help us out and help us make it better and, and valuable for Parents so the right, and we've got so that's the first event, and then the, there's farmer farmers markets in Berwick, so we're going to try to man a table there. Parent teacher conferences are coming up, so we're going to you know man tables at parent teacher conferences. The district chorus conference, uh, district chorus concert is just March seventh. April second is the district band. So we're going to try to have presence at all of the places where we have a lot of parents, and so that we can get more information out to people. And again, we're gonna start with this piece with digital, but vaping is a thing, you know. So we're gonna try to just expand the topics that we're talking about with families. I think that's that's a big plus. It's great. Yeah, yes. I was blowing my nice. eyes. Just a, extra hands to great okay. staff table. Come on down. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, parent teacher conferences, or would there be any teachers who'd be interested in actually handing this to parents as, parents as they're talking? Might that be an option for them? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Like, I think not we're forcing gonna, them, but nope. find an option. We're going to get it out to like, we're going to even QR codes in hallways. Like last time there yeah. was a survey about something, but just standing there waiting to get into the classroom. I was like, oh, what's this? Mind yeah. take the survey while I'm standing here. Yeah. Didn't QR codes to a lot of this stuff that they might not look at that night because there's just so much. You're trying to get to your right place in the right time and all the things. And we'll, in, we'll incorporate these into the, um, like the the newsletters that go home and all of that stuff. So yeah. So we're just trying to get raise awareness as best we can, help parents out. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. All right. So that is celebration. That is. That's my celebration. Okay. Do we have any more public input input at this point? Like. Uh, Shirley Glow, North Berwick. Um, I can't believe I'm saying this again, Lee. I'm in favor of safety and support of police, but I want the board to realize that getting an SRO specifically for Lebanon and not for the other towns is somewhat problematic. You know, the North Berwick police have a presence at the elementary schools. I don't know firsthand uh, what Berwick does, but knowing the professionalism of their department, I'm sure they have a presence also. Lebanon does not because years ago, Lebanon decided it didn't want a police department. It does not seem fair to be tech charging the other two towns so that Lebanon makes up for their deficiency. Um, you know, if the board does decide to put in a sorrow in Lebanon, I hope that it will also appropriate money to compensate Berwick and North Berwick for the presence our police have at the elementary schools. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Um, SRO officers, uh, schools, um, are you willing to let them carry a long gun? Because any of you target practice in here, can you imagine going up against somebody with an AR with a pistol? You're at a wicked disadvantage. 
Uh, if you want to prevent, you know, a mass casualty, you got to be thinking about that. Uh, the other thing to think about too, vaping issue. You guys aren't going to take care of that. Our police officers aren't going to take care of that. Our legislators can, and we need to talk to our legislators. Thank you. Anyone else? If you, if you approve, yeah. as I chair. approve. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Such power. Just want to make sure. Um, Hi, for those who don't know me, my name is Astaki Adonis. I teach uh, fifth grade music at the Knowlton School in Berwick. Um, I'm also the communications director for the district. And I'm also completing a principal internship at the middle school right now. Uh, I just want to say it's really incredible seeing how much more attendance we've had at meetings from the public. Uh, and I hope we continue to grow and get more consistent attendance. I think that's really wonderful. Um, but I will say, uh, as someone who's been regularly at most board meetings over the past couple of years now, um, occasionally I hear statements made that uh, it would kind of appall me if a student heard it coming from a member of the community. Um, so I just encourage everyone as we enter this budget season, um, and honestly, the election coming in the fall. Uh, if you have a perception or a question, please reach out. Like teachers are so welcoming; every door is open. Um, if you're looking to have a day in the classroom to really see what's going on in our schools, I'm more than happy to write my contact information on your agenda sheet and coordinate that, make that work for you. Because um, I promise you, if you come and see all of these yeah, in our schools. Um, I think you'll think very differently of some aspects of our district. Um, even with our celebration, like there's so much in one day I could describe that's happening across our classrooms. So um, I really want to create that opportunity for the public and for the board. If anyone is interested in having a day where they get to see what's really happening in our schools, please don't hesitate to. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Paint. And I'm my chair. Is that my okay? Me. Moving to number two. Uh oh. That's no All right. Go, go ahead. <laughs> you were close. Go <laughs> <So> close. <laughs> it's okay. Um, uh, my name is John Hall, and I'm a, a resident of North Berwick, and I am a parent of a couple of kids that attend the district. Um, been an educator for 21 years, and 20 of those years have been at MS 8060. Um, and for the last 13, 14 years, I've been teaching seventh grade social studies. Um, and I, I just, I really, um, I've been feeling a lot lately, like um, education is under attack, uh, curriculum is under attack, um, and school boards um, are under attack. And I have witnessed um, some people in the audience um, say some things that are absolutely appalling um, in public um, recorded. And that um, blows my mind. Um, it blows my mind that people then have the audacity really to question the curriculum of teachers. Um, not um, conduct business in a civil manner. Um, if you can't have discussions of the community in a civil way, um, you know, if we can't talk about things, citizens carrying guns around, um, teachers don't feel safe and it's not, you know, that the, the, the feeling of um, safety is more about the people carrying guns around. And I think that the majority of the people um, in our buildings, we're agree with that. And I, I just, I want to speak for what I would call a silent minority of our, um, sorry, silent majority. Um, of our three towns, uh, which um, I think are law-abiding people who believe in, in the legal system, in the court system, um, that believe in um, you know, our nation as a republic, um, that are patriots, um, that are people who make service, whether it's military or as a public official. Um, those, those are things that we need to be teaching into. And I know I only have three minutes. 
Yeah. 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 You know, he owned hundreds of slaves, and we can't deny that, that. But he also has some really wonderful ideas. I mean, he was um, pretty brilliant in some of his ideas. And one of his ideas was that, you know, we needed to educate um, the democratic mob, which is what the wealthier um, party uh, called it, um, and create educated citizens who can vote and can make can work together as a community. And regardless of his character as a person um, or what he did during the time period that he lived, he fought for public education. Um, and right now, I really feel strongly that people are fighting against public education. And public education is what binds our society together right now. Uh, public education is something that I've dedicated my life to. I know some other people in this room have dedicated their lives to. Um, and I really, really hope that our community members can help town election uh, and voice their opinions. Uh, not well attended, they're not um, a lot of people that vote on them. Uh, oftentimes, um, we have surprise right in the uh, So it's really important that people are paying attention and following along uh, with what's going at the school board. Um, and I appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. okay. I think we're ready for number 11. A motion to adjourn. Yes. <laughs> Let's do a sec. Do we have second. a second down there? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.